Welcome. And then it's funny. I <laughs> like, and then I was like, well, that was like the middle of the conversation. I don't even know where we started with that. Well, I always thought that was a Howard Stern reference. Oh. And then I watched the Gary Shandling documentary mm. and realized they're referring to the announcer played by Tambor, Jeffrey Tambor. Oh, well, I he love always Jeffrey would Tambor. say that. And I think he was making fun of Ed McMahon on the uh-huh. t- I'm not sure. Yes. It sounds he kind of sounds like he's doing an impression of Ed McMahon. Right. In, like, in my memory of it. We're doing an impression of Howard Stern doing an impression of uh, Jeffrey Tambor doing, doing an impression of Ed McMahon. <laughs> Ooh, this is cool. Welcome to the show, episode two sixty one. Wow. We're nearing the middle of October. Yes, it's the year getting spooky. Is- <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I have some scary music. Ooh, spooks. It's Halloween, and I don't even know what I'm going to be. That is That's scary. the scariest thing of all. <laughs> Listen to that. I am really upset at costume stores right now. Yeah? We, there are too it? many options and not enough DIY. Like there's, It just seems like... Everything's there. And too commercial. All, too commercial. And they've taken all those things. Like it's one thing if you're selling a like a, a specific character. You know, I'm like fine with that. You want to be SpongeBob? Great. Like buy your SpongeBob costume. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like I should like a cactus. You know, it's like they've taken all the ones that are on Pinterest as like DIY ones, and they've like commercialized them and put them in plastic bags and they don't look even half as cool as the DIY ones to begin with. Right. And I'm noticing that even, I went to Michael's the other day and I, the arts and crafts store and I hadn't been there in a while and they were selling all of the things that I see on my Instagram or on Pinterest to make. Like, really? like almost like, I, I'm trying to think of like what things I saw, but things that were, I've, I've definitely watched you know, like how to make a car, uh, chalkboard, like, you know, like a chalkboard sign or something like that. They're, they're putting it together for you. Well, it seems like the, Pinterest has really like changed yeah. the game yeah. of Halloween altogether. Yes. It's a little much. I for think me. it also may have kind of sc- screwed with people's expectations of baby showers and stuff. Everything. Like relax, everybody. <laughs> relax. It Baby showers cannot be. be improved. Like it is going to suck. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. I disagree. I love them. Well, I'm, I I like them. And like Halloween costumes, it's changed expectations on like what's a good one. Right. Like it has to be so right. original and elaborate. And even with the kids ones, did you uh-huh. see like uh-uh. um like my the makeup artist that comes here? She's making one of those transformers out oh, of a cardboard my box. Wow. Yeah. 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 And it transforms yeah. into like. Uh, Ac- Optimus Prime, yeah. oh, whatever Optimus Prime. Yes, and um, I'm just like, damn. Well, because it's like a reflection. I mean, of, it's a lot of work. The parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like I think some people really enjoy it. Yes, I love it. I get for that, but man, I love it. I have a rant. Okay, let me see what you think of this. Mm-hmm. So my house is situated on a hill, and over the hill of of my backyard is a school. Yes. And it specifically is the football field, like baseball Mm -hmm. diamond area. Mm -hmm. And so throughout the year, the different teams practice there from like three to five every day. And baseball season was really fun because I just like the sound of baseball. And so I enjoyed like hearing all of the noises that come with baseball, Mm -hmm. but football season's here. Mm hmm. I'm not a football fan, mm-hmm. but when they practice, they bring in a speaker and they play oh. music. Oh, okay. And I think that's pretty common uh-huh. at football practice. I think they have a lot of these songs that are designed to get you pumped up. <laughs> Y'all ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And who let the dogs out? Who? No, that they didn't play it. No, the they mix. didn't. I was saying that so ironically real. and like as a joke, and mm-hmm. that was on there. Yes. You know what? Now I have a problem with them too. <laughs> so the songs um, go over a variety of genres. What this, they all would be probably under the anthem 
category. That's my least favorite category, <laughs> in case you're wondering. But what what I what occurred to me because uh-huh. I was like, why do I hate this so much? Uh-huh. Was I was imagining if there were a female, I don't know, soccer team, yeah, and they had a mixtape of songs. Yeah. They would probably have some of the same ones, like "We Are the Champions," whatever yeah. those songs are. Yeah. But they would also have like Katy Perry's "Roar." Yes, they would. Well, there's not one female vocalist yeah. on any song that these men uh-huh. get excited about uh-huh. ever one time. Mm. Not one time. Mm-hmm. They have rap. They have hip hop. They have oldies. They have rock. Mm-hmm. They have every decade, mm. but not one goddamn vagina. Wow. They're really keeping those women out of there unless they're in cheerleader uniforms. And I realize that anthems are more common with um, male singers. Yeah, but but like, there are plenty of songs yeah. that are sung by women that can be called anthems. Yeah. And they're not on that mixtape, and I'm mad about it. Yeah. I get like a whole bunch of Beyonce songs. Well, yeah, good She's point. She's like the best for that. Look, she did the Super Bowl halftime show, people. Right. Pretty sure it would be okay on a football warm-up mixtape. And there's even songs that aren't anthems that are like Snoop Dogg and stuff. Yeah. And so I'm like... That they went to a lot of effort huh. to avoid having a vagina. I wonder. I wonder who's responsible for that mixtape. And I think maybe it's the individual who, the coach. Yeah, because I mean, let me refresh your memory on a coach that I met outside of his position as coaching, and he had a tattoo that said "White Power" on his back. Right. Well, at first, when I started analyzing the, the song list, yeah, I thought it was really heavy on people of color Mm -hmm. and that's fine. And I like all the music, but then I realized Uh who was missing. uh, Yeah. And it was, Oh, I am. (laughs) (laughs) And I just really started to think about how sports and masculinity Mm -hmm. and music and Mm -hmm. all that, and all the ways they overlap and the ways I don't like. Yeah. Them. I'm I have a real big problem. Landon was singing this new song. I think it's called I I I'll find it. It's I Love It by um Kanye West. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, I fucking hate it. You don't love it. I don't love it. I'm I have to make sure that that's um who it that's what it's called. Let me see, let me see, let me see. I know because it was just on the top charts. I love it. Yeah, by Little Lil Pump and Kanye West. And the lyrics are you're such a fucking hoe. I love it. <sighs> and they say that like four times. We're getting old though cuz we're bothered by that. And I'm like, this is a big problem. And then on the the radio edit they say you're such a like a freaky girl. I love it or something. But well, though the, I like when Rick James says that. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, whatever, Rick James. <laughs> keep doing your thing. But I did not like Kanye West singing "You're Such a Fucking Ho." I love it. And then knowing that he's married to Kim Kardashian, who is like, you know, you can love her, whatever you want, blah blah blah. She's a powerful what woman, but she's definitely portraying a, an image that where beauty and what you look like is very, very important. Mm. And so I think, like, you look at that, like, mar- that couple and what the messages that they're sending as this, like, oh, look at this powerful couple who, like, meets with the president and does all these important things and has their own show and gets paid a bunch of money. And it's just, you're such a fucking hoe and the only thing that matters is what you look like and, you know, just, and you get your career. What's the context I don't know. of, I like, what like... is a hoe in that situation? <sighs> is that a stupid question, like? I think it's like a promiscuous girl, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And they love it. He loves it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I don't freaking know. But I just don't, I just, I don't know. I just feel like Does that's Landon not like that who song? I want to like idolize. I just don't want to, I just feel like maybe we're, we're, I don't know. It just seems a little messed does up. Does Landon just say it's it's got a good beat? It does. Like and I've been listening it. to it like crazy. Like I've been listening to it too. And I'm like, I can't get it out of my head. It's one of those Catchy. earworms that just yeah. kind of lives in there. And, it, and it's so short. And it says the same thing. There's not even a lot of lyrics or 
Right. It's just, it, I just, you know, that's my rant about well, your rant in response to your rant. All right, fair enough. Yeah. I One thing I really do love is the clothes that they have at Carbon 38. Yes. I just placed another order. I look like a fucking hoe in those, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Carbon 38 has really gorgeous, um, I guess a lot of it is like athleisure, yes. but like hot. Super hot. Like those, everybody knows these, these like sexy liquid leggings that are like oh, they're like leather but but leggings. not and yeah they make your butt look so good and it's like they're just dis- they're trying to blur the lines between workout wear and street style mm-hmm. which makes sense because mm-hmm. that seems like what people were trying to accomplish anyway with like workout clothes yeah um but they have ready to wear footwear accessories athletic clothes um and they have 66 different brands that you can buy there. Mm-hmm. So it's not just mm-hmm. like Carbon 38. It's all these different labels. And they have tons of crop tops. That's what I'm getting into. Love them. Me too. That's what I'm wearing today. Hello. Lots of high-waisted stuff that's like super slimming. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just, they're great for performance and functionality and fit and really looking good. Yep. Um, but they have a deal for you. Carbon 38 is offering... They have new arrivals every day of the top luxury performance fashion labels. And if you go to carbon38.com and use code BRAIN for 20% off your order, you will find you will be very happy. That's carbon38.com, promo code BRAIN for 20% off your purchase. I used that code when I ordered the other day. Those leggings are back in stock. I ordered them. I saw them. They were out three times they sold out. Yeah, I saw them. They have a bunch of colors too. So any hoodles? Yeah. Um, oh, else? I had a short story from uh, uh, last time that I did a little t- TBC to be continued. Oh, on what the goat story? Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this is so funny because I felt like you know any time I get a chance to talk about salt with Susie, I'm excited. And you guys are probably like salt goats. What didn't you tell us they were getting airlifted out of parks? Well, let me tell you, in uh, Olympia National Park in Washington. Yeah. They are having a serious problem with the mountain goats. And one man was already killed by a goat that they kind of they're not native to there. I didn't say it didn't say in the article how they came to be in that national park. Right. But I don't I think they just don't have any natural predators there. And so their if population you get right right? <laughs> yeah. Their population has grown exponentially and now they're like over well, they're removing, air, airlifting 345 out of there, and they say they're going to, what do they call it, lethally remove, which is another fancy way to say kill, <laughs> between 275 and 375, try to get down to a population of zero. Oh, my God. Because these guys are... What's the problem? This is the crazy part. Okay. They're obsessed with human pee. I'm not kidding. That's the real reason. Goats are fucking they weird. They are going nuts for human urine because of the salts that are in there. And so people who are hiking along the trails are peeing on the trail. Like guys most sure, of the time. Well, sure. anybody. Yeah. I mean, I've done like. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go. go. You got to go. You know, and they're peeing right along the side of the trail. These goats go nuts for the, the salts that are in Eating the pee. It up. So they like come running out of the woods and people get hurt and they're like knocking people uh, for real and they're like digging and cl- they Hold said it. that they're digging at the earth to like are they trying to get to the pee like um during mid flow like a water that was fountain? that was what i was wondering i think it's post i think it's afterwards but the but, people are still around yes and it's scary yes and there was one man that tried to shoo away they were hiking and he tried to shoo uh the goat away and the goat charged at him and killed him yeah, you got to... Oh, killed him. Killed my God. him. Yeah, people have been killed by these goats. Oh, and, my God. Yeah, and like even when they... People think that like it's like a petting zoo and they can feed them. And the salts oh. on your hands, even from like sweating, they go crazy for. Like, these goats are like you, man. <laughs> I'm like, just give them a couple packets. Right, put out a salt lake. Go on vacation and just bring them back some from other countries and they'll be happy. Are you telling me, though, in general, that this is what happens with goats? I think it might. It's probably this specific breed or yeah. something like that. Or maybe that there's there's something to it. There's something like environmentally where they are missing something that maybe if they lived somewhere else, they would have sodium levels that made it not 
made so they wouldn't go nuts for the stuff. There, you know, that made me. I was like, oh, what's going on with that? But uh, you know. Wow, Sarah. Isn't that a weird You've one? blown my mind with the last two oh, stories. Oh, I'm so, thank you. That, you that is the, yeah, it says, uh, this one I found, it was on Vice that I, I got this uh, article, and it said, a national park is airlifting hundreds of mountain goats that have gone crazy for human pee. Good night. Yeah. It says, they're too thirsty for human piss. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's bizarre. Mm-hmm. And they also said in this article that it's very important, you know, it's, it's so funny, I was going to like send this to land and like passive aggressively tell them about like how it's really important to go to the bathroom 60 yards away, 60 feet away from any hiking trail. Really? 60 yeah. yards? Why? 60 feet oh, at least. Feet. Because that uh, the animals will be attracted to the smell of urine, some of them like mountain yeah. goats and I'm sure deer and some other ones that kind of fall in that same like, and then they get too close to humans. And yeah, they get too like human, like uh, comfortable Jesus. with humans. So you have to make sure that the nature stays out there. So you got to leave your nature stuff out there too. Whoa. Yeah. Do they eat BMs? Probably not. I bet they I don't do. Think Those a, I don't, weirdos. Well, I was going to say, I don't think a lot of animals do, but my dog has eaten his yeah, own many times. So I take that back. For sure. In fact, oh my God, poor Bo. Bo, I had to take her to the vet because she has kennel cough. Why is there so much shame? Uh, there is me? for me. It's probably like my own thing. For some reason, I feel like it's like I, I have a child who just got lice and like my my child is spreading it. And I'm like ter- scared that the other moms are going to like judge me. Did you ever have lice? Yes. Me too. Oh, it was the, and I had hair down to my butt. What did you do? Comb it all out? Yes. Yeah. It took hours. What about yeah, you? Same. Was it the worst or what? Oh my God, it's the worst. Like and the I worst. had it for a long time before anyone believed me. No, poor. Oh, you were just like, I was just so little itchy. And... No, it was just that my mom had five kids. She was yeah. like, you're fine. You're like, like lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Oh, Suze. Uh huh. And how itchy it is. Ah, uh, it was terrible. I'm surprised that everybody else in your house didn't get it with how many people were living in such small quarters. Quite. I mean, with that picnic bench and their that picnic just, table in the kitchen that just goes to show how little attention they paid me <laughs> they weren't even touching me no oh, hugs oh Suze no. I would have definitely contracted lice from you and did you have to like <laughs> did you have to take all of your scrunchies and like put them in a quarantine I had to do I'm, that I'm sure my mom did I mean yeah. I remember her just being like oh my gosh if you didn't have such beautiful hair I'd yeah. shave it off like it was you gotta get so every long egg. and she did each it was like each strand it yeah. felt like i mean that was misery right i was out for yeah you know, like a week <laughs> wow really i, I only missed one day oh no i think i was out for a while i think i really oh maybe in my mind i've just like kind of what were you gonna say about Bo though oh oh right <laughs> um yeah that time i went into like i don't know someplace in my head there uh she has kennel cough and so i felt like embarrassed because now I have to like call her doggy daycare yeah because um there was a point to this story well good <laughs> we were talking was something about in the beginning I was saying like we were talking about the goats and stuff yeah goats and then she gets kind of cop oh it was cleaning up an- uh, about what animals eat and all that stuff because she has kennel cough, one of the weird things that she does is this like retching thing where she's like goes to puke and then throws up, but it's like just mucus. She has done Ew. this. She probably did it 40 times all over. I followed Bo. You're kidding. With a paper, t- just cleaning up after, I mean, I put her outside, but still it's like, you got to clean up a little on my patio. There's like little dog burps and I had to like go around and like I'm like following her around it so you know I don't know where this fit into our previous conversation How but some dogs eat poop basically. okay so yeah oh that thank you <laughs> thank you oh my god it's like bringing me back I don't know where my brain just like took a vacation through that story but the part that I had was going to share is that yes I'm following Bo around and cleaning up after her mostly because if I don't Sigmund comes along and eats it before I get yeah. to it so he's eating his own shit and her puke. Three square a day. God, get, get, airlift him out of the, the place. <laughs> out of Kodo. Yeah. Well, I'll change the subject. Did you, are you familiar with the Tylenol scandal of the 80s? Oh, was this one where some, one was like they were poisoned? There was some like kind of people getting sick from the bottles? Yeah. yeah. Well, not from the bottles. They... The actual people was were poisoning Tylenol on okay, purpose. Okay, yeah, and people were dying from it. There Is this like, where this the seals started? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. I, I rem, I've, I've heard little bits and pieces, but I don't really know the whole 
story of it. All right, so fill well, me I'm going to tell you about it. Um, and first, I want to make Rhonda really mad mm-hmm. and talk about how <laughs> I have a new pair of Rothy's because I got the tennis shoe version. <gasps> you got it already? Yes, I did. Oh, I ordered them for my friend for her birthday, and I she's she's. I That's interesting to buy shoes because I'm like she needs this, and they were perfect for her. And she's like a businesswoman who's on the go, but also has three kids, and she's like running around all over the place, but always likes to look cute. So I bought her the red pointy toed flats. That is awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Rothy's, we get all these compliments all the time because when you wear them, they are they look really, really cute, but then they're super comfortable, so you can wear them all day. You're not going to get sore feet. They are made from recycled plastic water bottles, so which cool. is unbelievable. I just washed my original pair in the washer yesterday. Yeah, bright and Good shiny. Good as new. Oh, I can't wait um, to see your sneakers. That's the thing. Like, ah. You can wash them and then get them right back. That's why I chose white for the sneakers because I'm like, I can wash them. Oh, my God. I've always wanted white sneakers. See? I'm it's, them. They're the everyday flat for life on the go. Stylish, comfortable, classic. Comes in different styles. Like we said, the flat, the point, the loafer, and now... The t- so I guess they're calling it a sneaker, sneaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, different colors and patterns, and we love our Rothies. We know you will too. You've seen them on my Instagram a million times. Right now, Rothies has an amazing deal for our listeners. Use code Brain Candy to get free shipping, no minimum. Free shipping and free returns exchanges on your Rothies shoe, and trust me, you won't return them. Go to rothys.com, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com, and enter Brain Candy to get your cute shoes and free shipping. No brainer. Shoes that are comfortable, stylish, and sustainable, and free shipping. Get yourself a pair today, rothys.com. Promo code Brain Candy. Get this deal while it lasts. Rhonda, are you mad? <laughs> um, here's what I want to say. I read the, an article about the Tylenol thing. Yeah. It was just interesting because, you know, seeing how... Products and product design have to change in response to these types of things. Yeah. And then you you hear about like recalls and stuff that happen now. And almost every time the companies get get it get it wrong in their response. Like you can't help that it happened, mm-hmm. but you can help how you handle it. Even like Facebook with the Cambridge Analytica breach. Yeah. You know, like it took days for Zuckerberg to say anything about mm-hmm. it. And these types of responses are a problem. Whereas Tylenol, they were in the article talking about how they handled it perfectly. It oh, was that's a nice relief. Oh, yeah. you know what? Oh, thank goodness. I was like holding my breath for you to say like they did the worst and blah, blah, blah. Good. Yeah. They, Wonderful. They were like, first of all, recall. Sec- and this was millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. And then uh, they added the seal. Mm-hmm. They added the... Childproof. Cotton ca- oh, ch- the cotton. Inside. I always wondered what that was from. Yeah. So that you can't get to the pills, you right. would notice if anything were added. That's what they're saying. You'd it, have to take out the cotton. And okay, then the okay, metal totally. seal that's like the thing you poke through. Man. And all of those things, someone could still get in, but yeah. you'd notice. Yes. You'd be likely to notice, yes. oh, this been tampered with. I always thought the cotton was to either stop the sound of the shaking in the bottles and they were like, I don't know, being transported or to absorb moisture, but none of that's true. Maybe it's a, you know, multi-purpose. Yeah. But it's a good, when a you, good little invention. Yeah, when you see, oh, this has been broken into or not. Yes. And you can have assurance and thank God. But here's what I wanted to ask you as someone who studies psychotherapy. Yes. Why, what is the motivation mm-hmm. for the, they never caught mm-hmm. who, did who did it. And I want to know what, in their mind, if, you, if no one ever finds out it's you, yeah, what, yeah. What, what is in it for you? Oh, you know, that's to a difficult poison. one to answer. It's, it would, pro- I mean, it would, I think it's situational, you know. Uh, it's ugh, just this is sadistic. really upsetting, but like it kind of points to a woman when, with it being like hands off and no, one of two things, like the vigilante or like somebody who's, was either uh, something happened to like, like their child or their whole yeah they have a grudge against Tylenol and like something happened where somebody used that I don't know took too many and they severely injured themselves or killed themselves or something like that it's a family member who just lost it and there was already like it's, it all has to happen it's never just one thing you know it's always a bunch of stuff that has to happen. So it's like first you have underlying mental illness and then you pair that with like a lack of uh, social support and resources. And then you 
throw on top of it some like traumatic experience like the death of a you know, younger brother or something in in that way, like child who got a hold of it and like, oh, I'll teach them a lesson. Yeah, they make this dangerous. I'm gonna kill everybody, and then they'll they'll change something like that, or you know, who the heck knows? Yeah, but it's always layered, and I think I think there are usually signs. Do you think and that's that why when we gotta people look out die, for each other. that that person feels pleasure? No, maybe no. Maybe not. Yeah. Well then, I think the pleasure is felt in the or the the relief for them in that moment comes from the act of of setting it up, like the the not the actual moment of the person dying, mm-hmm. but but the them putting those bottles on the shelf right. is where that emotional yeah that's how that they payoff they knew comes. that it wasn't happening in the factories. They somehow knew that it was happening on the store shelves. Yeah, um, that's but so sad. Funnily enough, this happens. You know, it seems like it happened a lot in my childhood during Halloween, the fear of, like, needles. Uh-huh. But then I read on BuzzFeed in Australia, someone is putting friggin' needles in strawberries. I don't understand. I really, I what wish. What is that? That's, like, out of my scope of competence. And, <laughs> so, like, out I... Out of your pay grade? Like, I have no clue what would... I feel like who I would work with are the people who are the family members of the individual who's doing that. And, like, how can we... Do you, don't you think it's the same type of person, though? Yeah, I do. It's so weird. Well, I watched... Oh, there was this really good episode of Law & Order, the season premiere of Law & Order Special Victims Unit, and it was about a... Ready? Spoiler alert right now. Um, it was about a dad who was teaching such narrow and aggressive definitions of what it meant to be a man and like this is what masculinity is and you're mm-hmm. not a man and like he took him hunting and the son wouldn't shoot the rabbit so he's like you're and just started calling him like you're a little girl you're nothing but a, a you mm-hmm. know the p word that we all hate mm-hmm. and said like I, I i would hit you but i don't hit a little a girl and ends up you know raping his son which is so sad mm-hmm. but then the son goes on to shoot the do a school shooting and right. he's uh he shoots up to school and then son of course goes gets locked up but then they put the dad on trial too for teaching like you've you've taught the of how to be a criminal and by teaching this by doing what you did you taught how to be a criminal so i look at like what were the what was the being taught in this person's house what did mm-hmm. they grow up with what lessons were because there's usually like a a le- something that anybody who has experienced trauma or anybody who's gone through something, there's almost like this mantra that comes into your head of like, you know, a real man is this, or you're born alone, you'll die alone, or whatever that mantra is that's in your head that's like unhealthy can take over and can cause you to think some really twisted stuff. Yeah. So it's really, you know, I think back to, and we've talked about this a lot in the clinic actually recently, you know, that water study that the Japanese uh, researchers did on um, looking at water molecules yeah. in the bottles. And if you say wonderful, nice things to them, they will photograph differently. Then you have one there, you say mean things to it, you photo- it will look different. And I think those kind of things and that, you know, that negativity and a, a constant like life of hearing nothing but awful stuff would create almost like a, a person who if photographed on a molecular level, ha- like looks toxic in a way because that's what water looks like if you speak bad to it. Mm-hmm. This isn't like some hippity-dippity theory. This is like science. Right. You know? And how can that not affect us when we are filled with water Yeah, and a bunch of other stuff? Makes you feel, I don't know, I get pretty hopeless though because everybody has trauma. Yeah. Like life is so yes, hard. Yes, it sure is. And so to get it right, yeah. even most of the time, yeah. is like the victory yeah. of life. Well, that's you why that. you have to, that, to get it, even just a, a little bit of the time yeah. and practicing gratitude and having, being able to say, I'm, yeah, life is messed up, man. There's a lot of bad stuff, but isn't it nice that we get an hour to talk about some fun stuff and I get to sit with you and isn't it great that somebody invented podcasts so we can like, yeah. So you have to like think like that and it's hard to do because you know, we just can, but I don't know. You just got to choose what to focus on, I guess. I was reading this thing about, you know, 
um, psychopaths, and I'm bringing it up just because we were just talking about the Tylenol thing and the strawberries, and yep. then it all, who yep, would do that? Totally. Like it all comes all together. Of it. Yeah, totally. And it was describing how, because oftentimes people say psychopaths can't, you know, they don't have empathy, like mm-hmm, they can't mm-hmm. see whatever. And I'm going to tell you all about it, Rhonda, <laughs> after I tell you about this really cool thing that I just discovered and that I know you will love. And because especially life is freaking yeah. hard and it's called Talk Space, yeah. and it is an online therapy company that lets you message a licensed therapist from anywhere at any time. All you need is a computer with an internet connection or the a mobile app. Talk space, and you can work on your mental health, even if you have trouble making time for it in the past, or if you find you know traditional therapy to be um, too expensive. Yeah, it's a really good alternative. I love that. Yeah, that's what I love because I feel like everybody needs. They so an bad. Outlet. They need a place to talk, a space to talk. But uh huh. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> but a lot of people think. First of all, it can be scary to go to therapy. Yep, I get that. Second of all, it can be expensive, and it's also inconvenient, like if you work a normal job or even like weird hours. Um, But this is a great way if you want to get something off your chest or like if you just need a freaking positive message or a life coach or... Somebody to get you back on track real quick. Yeah, and talk about everyday challenges at work or home, whatever. And I just think that's really, really cool. So Talkspace platform has over 2,000 licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing life challenges we all face to match you with a perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy. Go to Talkspace.com slash brain candy and use the code brain candy to get $45 off your first month and show your support for our show. That's Brain Candy and Talkspace.com slash Brain Candy. If you've never been to a therapist before, I think this is a good... Great starter. Starter. Totally. Like, What's this up. all about? Yes. A lot of people, like my mom's generation, are like, I yes. don't need... Yes, totally. Oh, hey, give yeah. it a try. See yep. what you think. Yep. There's a big population that are becoming caregivers for their older parents, and it's very stressful to go through that. These are the kind of things that you need to talk about. So the psychopath study... Yeah was interesting to me because, A, I, you know, uh, talk to a lot of murderers through um, the mail that are in penitentiary. And um, it's always interesting to me because I have no trouble talking to them. We get along. We have a lot in common. (laughs) I'm not kidding. Like, I'm like, I like these people better than some of my family members, but they've done terrible, disgusting, horrific things. Yeah. But they were describing this way that they tested Mm. to see, like, is it true that they can't put themselves in other people's shoes? Mm. So they showed them a picture of a person looking at another person. And then they put a dot behind the person, you know, number one, and a dot in front of person number one. And then they asked people in the study to say, how many dots do you see? (gasps) Oh, And they would say how many they saw. And then they would say, how many dots does that person see? Like the person number one. So if one's behind him, he could, that person number one could only see one dot. And so they would measure like how long it would take for you or me to determine that answer versus a sociopath. It seems like that would be a very easy answer to answer really quickly. Right. Yeah. But they... Um, had trouble knowing how many dots. Oh my God! Person number one could see. They could do it, but it would. It took them a longer period of time. I... Everybody took longer to answer that question than the first one. Yeah. Because it's just a, your brain. Yeah, you have to think for a sec. Yeah, but the psychopaths had trouble imagining what it would be like to be that person number one. Okay, this is interesting. Because totally. this reminds me of what we learned in my like developmental uh, psychology classes mm-hmm. where they talk about different benchmarks that children hit. And one of the ones that is a test that they do with children is can they, do they, uh, there's a name for what they call it, but it's an understanding that somebody else has thoughts other than our own. 
Yes. And they t- can test it with like doing a, they, they take like a box of M&Ms and they put crayons in there, something that isn't M&Ms. And the child comes in and he opens the box and he goes, oh, hey, these aren't M&Ms, they're crayons or whatever. And they go, hey, what? Th- oh, well, I tricked you. Look at that. Here's some M&Ms. But you thought there, there were, you didn't think that, you thought there were M's, M&Ms in the box. And, oh, look, surprise, they're crayons. Like, isn't that a funny joke? Like, I kind of played a prank on you, introducing that idea. And then they say, hey, Johnny over there in the other room, I'm going to do the, like, I'm going to do the same thing to him. What do you think he's going to say is inside the box? And based on their answer, they can understand if they, like, a kid who understands that another child has separate thoughts than his own yeah. will say, oh, he's going to think there are M&Ms in there. Yeah. But a child who can't separate his own thoughts from the other child and only knows that he, like, thinks only my thoughts are what exist. I don't know that other people have other thoughts. He'll say, he's going to think there are crayons in there. Mm-hmm. He'll say what he his idea of reality is. Mm-hmm. His idea of reality, I mean, I hope I explain this right. His idea, or in a way that people can follow me and understand, but the child who just had like the quote unquote prank done on him now has an understanding that what's in that box is not M&Ms, it's crayons. But what he doesn't have an understanding of is that another child will think that there are M&Ms. Really? He doesn't understand that in the past he had another, really? it's a, there's a very specific, that's like a developmental marker mm. of being, and there's a name for it. There's also, there, so there are a few different ones. There's like another one with positioning and like th- going behind a mountain and like where you are on the map and is there somebody behind the mountain? But these are things that you can test in like, like the, I'm telling you that a test that they do on five-year-olds or like mm-hmm. four-year-olds. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if it, there's a struggle to do that. And if you can almost like predict this behavior is mm-hmm. what I'm saying is like, if they fail that test at four and they also fail at eight and they're still failing at 11, that maybe there's a real indication that they don't have that concept of what's happening in another person's, you know, maybe is that like, how can you right. re- like right. look at the origin of that? Right. Like, or how that kind of, who knows? That just well, reminds me of that. Study. And they, they connect it. I mean, psychopathy has absolutely nothing to do with autism, so I don't want anyone to think that's what I'm saying. But, you know, the ways that uh, people with autism connect and Mm -hmm. uh, relate to other people sometimes can have similar Mm -hmm. issues, like with um, being able to understand another person's emotions Mm -hmm. and things like that. So I think these tests are really handy just for showing how these different brains work outside of what we consider the typical behaviors so then we can interact with them differently and show them information differently totally um it's not about like who does it better right or whatever Mm -hmm. it's just about like oh their brain processes this information in a different way i want a recent one that i've had i've i've discovered recently in a few picture people my aunt included is the inability to like picture something in your mind's eye or the inability to picture faces. Like Isn't my aunt weird? has face blindness. Oh, weird. She said she knows who I am based on like other, but she, cues. other cues. And she did not know she had this until she was an adult. It, I've read that Brad Pitt has it. He I do, don't know. I, I think he does too. Okay. Which I could mean, also be why he looks like his girlfriends. Good point. Oh my God. We we'll, we just talked about how there's that meme going Dude. around where Brad Pitt takes on the traits of who he's with. Because it's like a mirror. Because he can't even recognize them. So it's almost like maybe like an empathy or like. Oh, that is so <gasps> weird. Dude, I love our podcast. Sarah cracked case. <laughs> this is so cool. Wow, that's crazy. This just in: face blindness may cause you to mimic the people <laughs> that you're dating. Just look at Brad Pitt. It's just in. <laughs> Sarah. That was a real light bulb that went off on that one that was man really insightful we just had to get my wheels turning talking about the the well that face blindness freaks me out yeah and i'm really glad i don't have it but it wouldn't even bother you if you did you You wouldn't even know that's the thing it's like we can't be worried about all this stuff i'm worried about it because like you know if somebody told me right now you have a neurological disorder i'd be really concerned but i do have color graph my synesthesia and it is ab- of zero concern to me. Okay. And I like that's it is technically a neurological disorder, but it does not bother. I mean, it, it only bothers me when I'm doing though. basic math. 
like when um, the the peop- there are these people, if you don't know what we're talking about, who claim, well, they, they don't, have the ability to picture anything in their mind in the way that yes. a normal, typical person does. Correct. So, like, when you're reading fiction, mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. presumably creating a, this uh, image in your mind of what's happening on the page. Mm-hmm. They can't do that. So it's just words, and they're like, why do people like fiction? Right. It's so weird. And it's, to me, inconceivable. I read an article by a guy who had it, and he said, people always ask you, ask him, well, how do you um, fantasize when you're masturbating? Oh, my God, good question. And he goes, well, now I know how you do it. <laughs> But he didn't answer answer the question. Oh, he has to look at something. Wow. I guess so. Um, Well, regardless (laughs) of that, uh, maybe he could make an exception and think about, like, if you were wearing a really cute outfit from La Tote. Yeah. I mean, that's a turn on. (laughs) Uh, Have you guys been wearing your La Tote? I have still so many outfits that are La Tote creations. Yeah, I came over the other day and there's a La Tote box on your front porch and I was like, yep. ooh, I wonder what she's What's got in What's in the box? La Tote is this really cool clothing service where you can choose basically a bunch of clothes that come to your house and you can wear them as much as you want. You love that. And then when you're done, you can send it back and get new stuff or you can keep them if you want. But it's just such a nice service because like, once you once I wear yeah. something a few times, I'm like, okay, I'm done with it, and that's not a sustainable closet right. model. I think it's really great to have your basics, like the the staples in your wardrobe, and then use La Tote as a service to fill in, so you keep up with the trends. You're always looking great. You always have new stuff to wear, new styles yeah. that fit whatever your needs are, the season, the activity, the temper. You can even sort clothes by weather. Yeah, you know, and then you don't have to spend your hard earned dollars on stuff that you're going to wear two times, and then the seasons change, styles change, and you'll like yeah, toss or it. maybe your body changes, or your body changes. Yeah. Yes, true. With La Tote, you can rent unlimited fashion, just wear, return, and discover fashion that fits you better. It'll take the stress out of getting dressed. Amen. Go to latote.com, that's L-E-T-O-T-E dot com to get started. Enter promo code BRAINCANDY at checkout to get 20% off your first month. That's latote.com and enter code BRAINCANDY. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, we were talking about the guy who can't see things in his brain to build on that i'm currently reading this amazing book called the body keep score by bessel van der kolk and he's one of the the leading um researchers on trauma and the effects of trauma on the body and they've shown and he's like found in in all of his studies and in in his clinical research that when you're a child who experiences trauma it cuts your ability to come up with creative solutions or to even have an imagination or to start like, like have creativity or to have, and, and I feel like there may be a link between the inability like that. If you have early childhood trauma, that that stunted imagination and stunted creativity and blocked areas of the brain that are responsible for the development of that would lead to a, a a struggle creating visual images in your head. Really? That's my, I mean, I, what we know is that this is what trauma does to children. Yeah. That it absolutely, uh, uh, you know, stops that, the development of that part of the brain. Or at least the, um, you know, like the synapses and all that happening. So kids can't come up with like creative solutions for how to get out of a problem or to, you know, it makes a me whole mad. bunch of stuff. I mean, the when trauma happens to kill kids, oh, it's, so it's like it's like game over unless yeah, there's yeah. a miracle. Yeah, really, in really. their life. And like a, te- the, I mean, the good thing is, is like you can. Well, they in this book it talks about you know how how you have to heal that is you have to help the individual create a new map of what the world looks like mm-hmm. because the world looks different to them. Things are more they they can't uh they detect fear faster that's the one that's one of the craziest in other people fear and aggression in other people way faster so they did they showed children um one group who had experienced childhood trauma and one who did not they showed them this series of 
like 16 facial expressions going from sad to angry and like how, how that progressed. So slowly, slowly, slowly changing from sadness to anger. And the children who had been traumatized picked oh. up the anger within the first three before the sadness barely even looked like anything less than sadness before they were like, nope, that person's angry. Whereas the children who came Do from loving homes, I definitely like see you things. think someone's angry yeah. before they're yeah. angry. Or- I, yes. And I, it's almost come out in my relationship yeah. where I'm very sad. I pick things up as like big, like, acts of uh, you know like this oh he's being so mean oh oh i can't believe he's when that's not the intention at all mm-hmm. and things become more intensified and so you're almost like highly reactive maybe I and it makes that. you kind of raw where like little slights you're are taken so serious like so seriously for you because everything looks like and you're always in defense mode it's weird though because i mean i don't know what your perception of you is yeah. but I think of you as like a person who like you're a te- you tease like you have this sense of humor that a yeah. lot of guys have oh, where yeah, like they yeah. tease out of like affection. Yeah. And oh. I would think you wouldn't do that since you seem like you're sensitive to that. Is that not I don't you know it's funny cuz I don't feel like I do that. Really? Yeah. Huh. Like, Maybe you just do it to me cuz we're so close. Yeah, probably. Like, I can tease you. Yeah. you're like my sister. Right. Yeah. So maybe it's different. Like, I don't think I would tease. Really? Yeah. I'm thinking about you in the, even in the challenge house and stuff, and I think that... Oh. Like, eh. you tease people. Like, yeah, you'd be like, kinda. oh, okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah, I do do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but, if they're doing something hilarious that I can absolutely make a joke out of, I can But take you it. know your own intention, so it wouldn't yeah. register as like, oh, I'm being aggressive. Right. Because right. you're not. Yeah. I think it's, hmm, I don't know how that plays out. Hmm. I'd have to think about that. Right. But I think it's a lot of times like, you know, I'll, I'll think if, if it's, th- it's, I've had to learn how to do this, but if somebody else, and I think everybody struggles with this in, in, in some ways, but if somebody else is having a bad day and they're rude to me, I'll, t- I'll take it for a long time. I took it very personally. I'm like, oh, that person must not like me. It's almost like I don't get angry. It's like it decreases my self-worth even, you know, more. So it's like, oh man, they must be mad at me. Yeah, but it feels, that sounds like a weird like um, self-consumption. Like if you think everything's about you. Oh, that's true too. But like if you've already labeled yourself as like not worthy or bad or, Mm -hmm. or like, you know, however a child who experiences trauma would label themselves then I think that's more of like, well, this is what I deserve. Wow. Not like a, everything's about me. Right. You know, it's more like, yep, that's, that's how they should be treating me. I guess I am just all, that's all I'm worth. Right. Versus thinking, oh no, I'm fine. I'm still worthy of love and, and all this great stuff. And I have a bunch of stuff going for me. That person's just probably having a crummy day. Like that was a hard thing for me to realize. Right. Yeah. Interesting. The brain is a complicated thing. So (laughs) complicated. It is crazy. We're like just now learning things about it where people are like, oh, yeah, maybe we That's why I'm always like, Sarah better crack the case on that. Like I think the whole uh, field rests on your shoulders. (laughs) I think you're all No press, people. Right. (sighs) There was an article about, um, I think the title of it was, this article won't change your mind. And it was about persuasion and the ways that, you know, biases and things mm-hmm. like affect our inability as human beings to um, be convinced of something unless we want to be. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's not new information. We know this about people and confirmation bias and yeah. things like that. But it was like, man, we are so terrible. I am always in the state of my where you can change my opinion. <laughs> We I'm are. the opposite of that. We I'm like, that. I will halfway through my sentence change my opinion about something based on any new information you've given me. Right. And I think maybe that it has to do with the field I'm in where you really have to have a we don't know and like a curiosity and this like dot, 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 you know, kind of. Yeah. Because there aren't really 
you know, a lot of hard and fast answers, I guess. Yeah. They call it motivated reasoning, like where your oh, like brain is trying to get to where it already wanted to go. And uh-huh. so you filter out the information that's inconvenient to those conclusions that yeah. disagree with it. Yeah. And um, it's it was trying to describe the where, the reason why truth wouldn't be why we wouldn't evolutionarily speaking be predisposed to want truth wouldn't you want to know which berry was the correct berry to eat etc like it seems like logically speaking our the human race would want truth i think what trumps that is the human need to be higher up on the hierarchy like right get information or give information that in some way boosted yeah. their social that's right i think that's yes. the trump card right like that the social issues yes. are the ones that are more important with regard to information mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's not like which way is the best way to go it's more about um and even like they were saying deception can be very handy totally evolutionarily too. speaking yeah think about camouflage oh right yeah, so like do it. deception in the human form involves more like Mm -hmm. Uh, communication rather than like skin or something to save yourself to make yourself better to in in, you know and it helps you decide or determine who's on your team Mm -hmm. like if you're all in agreement about something even if it's the wrong thing (gasps) oh oh dang right that almost seems like okay yeah Mm -hmm. and that's like people who are really uh like uh caught Cautious or fearful of others. Yeah. Like I can see them going more into, like, we see that where they become more, uh, uh, like they dig in, like they, they, what is the word I'm trying to say? They double down, thank you, on whatever their theory or concept or idea is already because, like, oh, nope, those guys over there are scary and I don't, we're gonna. Well, I talked about that, how, like, politically speaking, like, if you were to present information to somebody, that went against their beliefs but was founded in science or whatever, that instead of planting a seed against their argument or convincing them that their argument is wrong, it actually makes them believe there's more. Oh, it's so backwards. Well, it, it's true. Yeah. yeah. We think of it as the other guy mm-hmm. is doing that, mm-hmm. but we do it too. Totally. You know, like every person. You're right. Is um, susceptible to yeah. it. I feel like we... As mm-hmm. just like human beings, me mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. are less so. Like I'm always like, yeah, sure, that sounds right. I'll go with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I too yeah. can be very. You don't need to be like because I could see. Yes, same. So I, I think we're unusual in that department. And I'm like open to a bunch of different possibilities. Right. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I thought that was good. That I'll is put really that in cool. the newsletter. You guys will want to read that one. Yeah. Um, the newsletter you can sign up for at thebraincandypodcast.com. Um, just put your email in there. We don't spam you. It's about once a week I send you something. And um, I wish I could send everybody as well as that email a big old case of BioClarity because Love it. it is the skincare routine for you, for me, for everyone. If you suffer with breakouts or if you just want to have nice glowing skin, then go to BioClarity.com because they have products that are effective but they're not irritating they have a routine for clear skin uh, if you want clear skin or they have an essentials routine if you have normal skin they have masks the clarifying mask the hydrating mask and now they have the ones for your whole body the beauty boost beauty supplement or sudsy the so fresh so clean body wash and um well- a body wash? You said that last time. Oh, I'm sorry. But just I just accept forgot, it. Like, I know. I'm like, I haven't gotten it yet. So now I'm like, okay, well, I got to get that. Get started on healthier habits with your skincare. Just go to bioclarity.com. Our listeners get 15% off their entire first purchase. Plus shipping is free when you buy a routine and it comes with 100% risk-free money back guarantee. But you need to enter our code brain candy. That's bioclarity.com and enter code brain candy. Mm-hmm. There you go. I'll t- I was thinking about one of our brain candy brainiacs recently, our zookeeper friend. Kara. Yeah, what about her? Because I heard a really interesting, uh, I guess, fact or like something that they found when researching what the most profitable majors are. Okay. Do you, would profitable you like to take a guess majors. on what the most 
like the major that you can choose in college where the people who choose that major have the most success the most, and how they measure that is the lowest unemployment rate and oh. the highest average salary. Oh, so I would have it doesn't guessed. matter what the average salary is if you can't find a job. So totally. we look at really low unemployment rate and really high I salary. I would have said like business administ you know, type right. of thing. But apparently there's a lot of unemployment in there. There's a lot of uh people who like there's a big range of salary um Okay. Like what the salary is. Mm -hmm. The number one is zoologist. Zoology number one. Zoology is the number one major. At it, it the most profitable major. Only I can't believe that. I couldn't either. You know what the empl- unemployment rate for a zoologist is? Hmm. 1.1%. That's like the, every zoologist is employed. Wow. And the average salary is over $100,000. It's $111,000. That's a shocking year. information. Right? Yes, it is. Yeah, I was listening to this on NPR, and they were joking that it's because it's the very last thing in the college catalog, and nobody <laughs> chooses it because That's really they're like, funny. yeah, well, we'll just be, you know. And then it's almost like I, I, I thought about that, and I'm like, man, when I was a little kid, it seems like every kid's dream to be a veterinarian, but really, what we needed to do is explore the alphabet a few more letters and pick zoology because it's essentially the same study right. but you're just looking at different kind like what do you want to work with a domestic house cat or a wild tiger <laughs> you know right it seems like that would be the the fun job and i would love to be i'm like dang animal behavioral like psychology and zoology are are paired like they a lot of people who start in psychology go into animal behavioral like you know that whole field like for example, how and how I know that is JD from my season of the real world started in psychology and then moved into um, like animal behavior, which is a branch really? of psychology. What are you saying? Animal psychology is falls under the umbrella of psychology. They don't specify human psychology. Come on, Sarah. I swear. That's a class that you can take. I know. It's like I have to sell you. People always say that one of the funniest parts is when I'm like, Sarah. (laughs) I have to like defend my facts. But Why is that the case? Because the same way we use, (laughs) like, okay, for example, like think back to the um, uh, Harlow study with the monkey and the wires and which monkey, like would the monkey choose a wire mother or a cloth mother the wire mother has food, the cloth mother doesn't. We know that like it's a nature versus you know nurture thing and how they prefer the warmth. That is animal behavior. Right. So but based on animal behavior, we can make assumptions about human behavior. So interesting. Yes. So that's like a branch where the two split off and people go, What would you like to study? Would you like to study research and how animal this affects animals and focus on that? Or would you like to study the human experience with yeah. it? And then it and then it almost divides at the master's level. But wow. it's the exact same classes that somebody who's works in like uh, animal behavior takes that I take. Interesting. In the very in the early in the undergraduate program. Can you believe after all these episodes, I am still learning shit? Yeah, I, same year. There is so much to oh, know. Oh man, that's why I mean we're going to be on episode a million after. <laughs> yeah. Right. An episode for every Scoville that the hot pepper is. <laughs> That is so fascinating. Yeah. And I don't know. Where did you find that stat? Do you have a reference? Or uh, yes. It's, I actually have the article. I think it was in the New York Times that I, I huh. had this. And I heard about it on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Weird. On NPR's podcast. Okay. Yeah. Well, good to know. Yeah. On that same podcast, I heard that Ikea <laughs> is doing scans of your booty to make a custom chair for gamers where you can sit in it for an extended period of time comfortably. Mm -mm. cue the eye roll that is crazy right aren't they seem really comfortable already right and then said in the in the same uh, article it's saying that gamers spend an average of six hours in front of the television or in front of their game a day that's it yeah i think i thought it would be more a day yeah i really thought it would be more think about that say okay say your job as a gamer oh that's what you're telling me yeah like if you're a gamer Oh. They said the average time a gamer... I, they didn't clarify if that was like a professional gamer or just like a regular person. I don't think it is if they're saying a, just oh, gamer. Oh, okay, okay. I was thinking almost like professional. But they said that they spend an average of six hours a day in front of a... or s- sitting in front of a screen, but they didn't say six hours a day playing games 
or like playing it because I'm like, okay, well, you know, I go home, like I'm not sitting in front of a TV for six hours, but you know, we wake up in the morning and Landon turns on ESPN and we're like having our coffee and I'm like scheduling out my day and yeah. writing my calendar and technically I'm sitting in front of a TV. Sure. Yeah. That, you're right. Though, all right, all right. So there's like an hour right there mm-hmm. and then I come home and I watch you know, uh, some news, and I watch one episode of yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, and all my like screen time three combined hours. is a lot. Yeah, think about that. And I was like, six hours, that seems like... And okay. then I think about, I sit in front of a, a screen when I'm typing up progress notes for the clinic. I'm in front of that screen for th- at least three plus hours a day. Right. So you can, that yeah, adds no, up that, real fast. Okay, well, maybe, maybe I do need a butt scan. <laughs> maybe like Ikea's onto something. You know what? <laughs> Call Ikea. This chair sounds better yeah, and better. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so they're they're saying like that's gonna be comfortable. I guess, and I that's like a new thing that they're offering these custom chairs. I feel like IKEA's really like gone out, uh, you know, on a limb ever since their their owner passed away. Like the kids are like, <laughs> hey, I know what we'll do. We'll do like custom chairs. We'll do like meatballs made of bugs. You know all the <laughs> weird shit IKEA's doing right now. <laughs> They totally are. They it's like, yeah, dad's gone. Now we can do all those weird ideas Finally. that we had. Like, oh, the guy who says no is out of here. That is funny, Sarah. Yeah, that's my share. All right, that's a good one. Hold on, my son's being an idiot. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I handled that. Yeah, just redirected his Dang banging so. to another area. Um, okay. He's such a boy. Ooh, did you see the pictures of... The spiders mating on the... No, ugh. no. Oh, gross. What? Talk, this what? is perfect for what? October because it's so... <laughs> Wait, let me see if I have this. Oh. Where's my machine here? Hold on. Um, it's this... great because I don't have any... I don't know the story at all, so I'm like going to do a spooky voice for like... Well, something. it is spooky because... Say it. It is for... <laughs> it is for real hair. Like mm. scary music. It, if you saw a picture of this beach, and I can't explain to you why they're all there, it's just like, a, a, what did they say? 300 meters of just no, no, web. No, no, no. Ah, 300 meters of web. See, okay. I thought you were going to say 300 meters of like spiders mating, which I'm like for some reason That's, okay with. Yeah. It, it, like, because I'm like, oh, they're just doing the web. Ew. Nothing it's turns so a human bad. being into a ninja faster than walking through a spider web. <laughs> right. I don't know who said that. I heard that joke so a lot. Funny. I wish I could take credit for it, but I heard that somewhere a long time ago. I'm like, that is true. You walk through there and you are doing a lot of ninja moves with your hands to try to keep that web off of you. Ew. If you saw this picture, because it was oh. trending on Twitter recently, and I was like, oh, I want to die. Have you seen the images of what happens in during floods and monsoons in places where there is spider there are spiders and they all go to the trees and they create a web and it, it looks, looks like, like cotton that. candy. That's <gasps> what it was like. Man, that is so freaking gross. And see speaking of spooktacular, did you see the handmaid's tale costume? They were selling sexy handmaid's tale. No. No. Yes. No. So no. mad. Oh. That's a fucking dude who started that for sure. <laughs> Like, How can, that's the whole point. Oh my point god, that's the whole the point. Or the that TV. costume wouldn't you know what you would get if you wore that costume? What? Uh, Oppression? No, a group a beating from the the entire group and then hung up on that wall like they did in the movie. Yeah. Or in the that movie book. I and, thought it was show. funny because in the description, I don't know oh, why I'm this so struck me out. funny, but it said at the end like pantyhose not included. <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's not the problem. Where, no, well, then no. I'm not buying it. Then I'm out. Yeah, and somebody tweeted the picture and was like, this year I'm going as existential dread for Halloween. <laughs> because it's so horrible. Who thought that oh, was a good idea? Oh Come God. on. Even ironically, it's like still, give, like, mm, I don't know if I'm just extra creeped out and upset by that because you paired it right after the spiders. And so like the feelings i have about the spiders are carrying over to this costume but i'd probably just be equally grossed out no matter when you presented this idea did you read about the main restaurant that is getting the lobsters high on marijuana before they boil them i uh, see no problem with that (laughs) like they don't want them to experience pain well in sweden they banned it Oh really? I yeah, was, yeah, that yeah. was an article. Did I talk about this I on here? I think we did talk about that. Yeah, that they that they're saying it's too painful it's for the lobsters. Yeah, so, so this they're not restaurant to... is handling it know. through. It's not a bad way to go out. 
wonder if that has the same effect on them mm. as you know it does on humans. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to test the Ask love the for Cheech and Chong movies. <laughs> Put them in front and see if they <laughs> right. respond. Um, Do you think this is funny? <laughs> right. I mean, that's where you go to show like it is psychology it's or just like, like set out like a, an apple and a bag of doritos and whichever one they go towards be like oh yeah it's working they pick the doritos <laughs> do you think if you were high on marijuana that you'd be less upset about being boiled probably all right i mean i'd be less upset about most things or yeah i don't know it's the uh in my psychopharmacology course the book referred to it as the drug of novelty why that it's it makes anything that's not very like you can find something about, you know, this pen I'm holding in my hand that you're like, oh my gosh, look at this pen. It's like so cool. I don't yeah. know. It like makes very simplistic Everything things gets more exciting. like, you know, exciting. But uh, Did you read about how Beyonce's former drummer, this woman, is has gotten a restraining order or wants a restraining order because she believes that Beyonce practices extreme witchcraft? <laughs> <laughs> and if it. she does, I say, get it, girl. It's working. And whatever spell you're casting, I would like a page out of that spell book. <laughs> and I thought, oh, well, this person's just Looney Tunes. But apparently this drummer was also um, a drummer for one of the late night shows. I mean, this is a oh. successful person uh-huh. who really believes Beyonce. She said that she killed her baby kitten. All this weird oh, stuff. It's so funny to me. All right. At most, Beyonce has the witchy kit from Sephora. (laughs) The last thing I want to mention is how some lady went on vacation. (laughs) I can't wait. Uh, And then went to the doctor because she was like having discomfort in her vagina. (gasps) And out they pulled. No, no, stop. What are you going to (laughs) say? Okay, so a lady goes on a vacation, you said? I think so. And then she comes back to the doctor in the United States or on vacation? I don't know. I think the England details. is where she lives. Okay. Oh, so none and of those And I don't know matter. where she went on vacation, but apparently during a night where she says she was drugged, they put a turtle in her. <gasps> this sounds like the freaking shows in Thailand. Show. And then what? Ping pong shows. Yes. Like. I've seen um, this in real life, IRL. They had to take it out, and she's okay now. Shocker. They had to take it out. <laughs> they left it in there. <laughs> what if they're like, you're fine? Yeah, that's okay. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. So she had a turtle in her vagina. Mm-hmm. A baby, well, obviously, a baby turtle? A sn- well, a, actually, the is headline. It alive? No. <gasps> the turtle wasn't alive? No. Oh. It had been in there a long time. Oh. I feel like I would notice if I had a reptile in my vagina, <laughs> and that is not a euphemism for a penis. <laughs> I would note either way. Finally, maybe it can be. In the title, it called it a tortoise. Oh, okay. and then at the end, it was like some reports have said it's a turtle. Okay. <laughs> I guess so. I love that when they have to like go back and check and like remember when I talked about the uh, Carolina <laughs> pepper in the original article they had referred to it as the California pepper and then of course at the bottom it's like in our original writings we <laughs> called it the California pepper blah 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 I would love to see that article where it's like in the original one we thought it was a tortoise up her vagina but it was actually just a turtle <laughs> yeah. probably that same fucking turtle guy who was doing a bunch of weird shit before with his strippers on stage oh my God, and he's like right. going around to vacation clubs and being like hey I'll show you my turtles. Oh my God. Oh, my god. That's gosh. all for today, though, Sarah. Wow. Unless well, that's a anything. good note to go out on. A little turtle, turtle up, action. In the, up in the lady parts. There you go, people. You know? That's all for now. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>